Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage, and here we are underneath our 2003 Lincoln Town Car. What we're doing under here, well, you can probably see if you look on your screen right here. You've got a leaky pinion seal on our rear differential, and uh, it's not just a seep anymore. We've got some actual fluid coming down, so it's time. we got to take care of that. So today we're going to show you how to do that, and we're going to do it a little bit differently than some of the other videos you might find on YouTube. Most of the videos on YouTube call for counting the number of threads on the pinion nut when you remove it and then putting it back exactly the same place. And while there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, we're going to be using a few different steps and gather a little bit of data with some help from our service manual. So first, let's go ahead and talk about why it's important to put your pinion nut back together exactly where you took it off. And that simply boils down to the fact that the pinion nut puts preload on the pinion bearing which affects where the pinion gear sits in relation to the ring gear of the rear end. Now that's very important and it's regulated by a crush collar and some very specific specifications when it's put together from the factory or from somebody if they rebuilt your rear end. Now that adds a certain amount of backlash to the gears. It affects the position. And basically if you over tighten that pinion nut, or don't tighten it enough, you're gonna kind of run into a problem. You don't tighten it enough, there's an obvious problem. You over tighten it, you run the risk of crushing that collar a little more, changing the position of that, affecting the mesh of those gears. Now those gears have to mesh in a very specific pattern for reliability. And if you change that, you run the risk of completely ruining the rear end. And nobody wants to ruin the rear end. So today what we're gonna do is go through some steps on how we can gather a little bit of data using an inch pound torque wrench. Now, this is something that would have been used to set the drag on the pinion nut to make sure the preload was correct during assembly. Well, during assembly, there's usually nothing attached. It's usually just the pinion bearing and the pinion and your pinion gear and you're checking all that stuff. Well, now with this car, I mean, obviously we're gonna have our drive shaft out, but you still have the, the ring gear, the differential, the track lock if so equipped you've got the axles, you've got the brake calipers and the wheels, all adding drag to the system. Well, fortunately, the service manual calls out for that. So what we're gonna do today, and we'll show you here as we go through the, the intro, we're gonna be removing both back wheels and we're gonna remove the rear calipers as per the service manual. All right, so one quick correction, you do need to remove the brake discs as well. Once we do that, we're gonna be able to gather some data before we take it apart and use that same data when we're putting it back together. There's some very specific steps in the service manual that will show you how to set that up and make sure it's perfect. Now we are still gonna mark positions. We are still gonna count threads. So like I said, that's not bad stuff. That's not necessarily bad practice, but we're gonna add a little bit of data. And anytime you can come in and have data on something, you get a little more assurance that you're putting it back exactly where it can go. And I love having data when I work on cars, so I'm gonna use this to gather that data. So we're gonna pull the wheels off, pull the brake calipers, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull out the drive shaft. So as we take our wheel off here, uh, it's pretty important to point one thing out. Make sure that you put the vehicle in neutral uh, and have it supported properly. We've got it on our lift, so we're good. Um, but have it in neutral so that you can move some stuff around on the drive shaft to access the bolts. And the big thing on these cars, always make sure before you lift it, you've got the air suspension turned off. Brake caliper bolts are 10 millimeter. And all we're gonna do is remove the caliper bolts, not the anchor. You do need to remove the brake discs as well. Uh, I looked in the book again to double check and the book says to remove brake drag, you would need to remove the caliper, but also the disc. And you would notice that because as you turn it, you can kind of feel and hear a little bit of pull here and it adds a little weight on the end. So we're gonna remove the brake disc and we're gonna do that on the other side. And that way, when we check our pinion measurement, it'll have uh, no drag or the exact setup that the, the service manual calls for. All right, 
Nice thing is on the uh, backs of these, you don't have to remove the caliper anchor. So just as we remove the caliper, the rotors just pop off after that. All right, so we're going to start by removing our drive shaft. But before we do that, we want to make sure we line up our balance. So we need to mark a reference mark on our drive shaft as well as our pinion flange. So we'll put a mark here, put a mark right there. There we go. And sometimes if I'm going to end up with multiple reference marks, I like to make specific types. So those three lines will all line up on the flange. All right, so now we can take these off. They're 12 point, 12 millimeter. And uh, once we get these off, we're going to need to use a tool in here to pop the drive shaft off. Now the drive shaft just slides into the yoke on the transmission side. So the only bolts we need to do are here. The reason we put it in neutral was so that we could spin this and get access to these bolts without having to go up over top. So I'm going to try to use the impact with a 12 point chrome socket and see if I have some good luck here. And we're going to turn this to make sure we don't strip anything. There we go. These aren't too bad. But there's one. All right, just because the end of my impact was uh, kind of getting close there, I'm going to use a little extension. And I even went and found this black one that's a uh, Harbor Freight rated impact. So it won't be a chrome one, but it's Harbor Freight. There, that's seated much better. All right, nice and easy. The reason, again, for the impact, since we got it in neutral, if you tried to do these by hand, you'd have to really hold the drive shaft. All right, so once we've got all of those bolts off, we can come into this area here and pry our drive shaft loose. It can be kind of tough. There we go. Okay, and we'll set this tool down. And then just push your drive shaft in a little bit. That'll seat the yoke on the other side, allow you to drop it down. And then just very carefully pull it out. And then you can pull it all the way out. We'll go set this aside. All right, so here is the pinion nut that we're gonna be removing. Now what we're gonna need to do is uh, as you can see this is much easier to turn now that we have everything disconnected but we are going to need to hold this if we ever want to get this loose so i've got a piece of an old lawn mower and i'll show you what we put together when we're all done now a couple things we're going to do while we're up here i'm going to go ahead and make a mark here on our nut and here and that way we get our pinion flange back on at the exact same spot. A lot of people talk about us counting the threads and I don't know if you can kind of come up and see closely with keeping it in focus. But we have one right on the edge, two, three, four. It looks like we have four threads. So when we break this nut loose, we can count how many it is to remove it. But we're going to be taking some measurements before we do that. So we've got our inch pound torque wrench. This is a, uh, a mechanical or analog torque wrench. And what it does, it's, or beam torque wrench is what it's called. But as torque is applied, this needle will, will move and give you a torque reading. So one problem, this is a quarter inch on the end. So we're gonna have to adapt it up to the half inch that's on the one and one sixteenth socket that I have. I'm gonna use the smaller chrome socket that I have that you can tell looks like it went through a hurricane or something or at least a snowstorm. But uh, at any rate, rusty socket aside, this is gonna fit on our pinion nut and we shouldn't lose any torque in the process because although there is a little movement here, once we get started, that'll all tighten up. Um, I'll go through my tools one more time and see what I got, but unfortunately, I think this is the best we're gonna do. I don't have a quarter inch to half inch direct, so we're gonna have to adapt it twice. All right, so per the book, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get on our pinion nut here and we're gonna go ahead and turn this and we're gonna take our reading, which is about two. <laughs> it's not much, this is very loose. And again, I'm gonna make sure that we've, I'm gonna hold it just to make sure that we're tight against our adapters there. And then I'm gonna let it spin. And I'm gonna watch that as it spins. And it is barely two. It is pretty loose. So 
And they do call you, tell you to go around a few times and that'll validate the reading as it goes through. And we'll do that. So we'll double check our reading, but it looks like we're at two. So when we take this off, we're actually gonna wanna tighten it a little more and we're gonna get it to at least eight when we put it back together to make sure we don't have any problems. All right, so per the book, we've done several revolutions with our inch pound uh, beam torque wrench. What the book does say though, so there's luckily a contingency for this, which is exactly why we want to get the data. For all of the guides that tell you to just remove the pinion up counting the revolutions or counting the threads and putting it back exactly, that's great in some cases, but in our case, our pinion is actually looser than the specification. Now the specification from Ford for a used pinion bearing is a preload of eight to 14 inch pounds. Well, all we're getting is two inch pounds. So if we were to put this back, it would be below spec. Now the book says, if you record below spec, go ahead and put it back into the specification. That means according to Ford in their service manual, when we reinstall this nut, we're actually going to want to tighten it to somewhere in the range of 8 to 14 inch pounds because we recorded lower than that. If, however, according to the book, you record a higher preload, say you record 16 inch pounds, then you will put it back to 16 inch pounds. Let's say if it goes higher than the specification, put it back to where it was. So in our case, lower than the specification, we're going to bring it back to the 8 to 14 inch pound range. And uh, luckily with our unit here, we were able to validate that, get our reading, which is very low. And uh, again, this was removing all drag from the axle, including the wheels and tires, brake calipers and brake rotors. And uh, that's kind of where we're at. Let's go ahead and take this off. All right, so I'll show you the special tool that we're building in just a second, but what Ford calls for, they have a special tool that holds the flange using some of the original bolts. Now, as you might notice, there's eight bolt holes here, but only four used by the drive shaft, and they're clearly visible by this outline of where they're cleaner. So what I've been doing, I've got a M12 1.75 bolt, and I'm using some penetrating oil, and I'm going through the other ones that weren't used, which are just rusty and full of dirt, and I'm taking an impact, a small impact and just very carefully running back and forth you can also do this with a die or a, a tap but I'm just using an old bolt don't do this with the original drive shaft bolts you don't want to break those or ruin the thread All right, so now I can use these two that I've cleaned up to hold my flange. Now you're probably wondering what special tool do I need to get from Ford? It sounds like it's just something that holds this. And well, that's the exact answer. You don't need a special tool from Ford. You can use some scrap metal. So this was a piece of an old pull behind lawnmower that we scrapped and I cut some of the tubing off to save it. And these were some little brackets on the side. So all I did was cut this. I've got a two foot nice thick bar. I put two holes in it and some grade eight bolts and I can actually make any attachment I want using flat stock in the future. Now obviously there's a little bit of a problem. The Ford tool has a little bit of a lip here and you can see that's gonna prevent this from coming off. So I'm gonna have to um, draw that with my marker and then go ahead and remove that. So, so here is the special tool. I've. Uh added some fanciness to it. I've painted it with nice flat black paint and I've kind of cut this little hole in it here. So as a result, we go to our secondary holes here, lay this over it, fits in nicely. So I can go ahead and get it set up. All right, we got our one and one sixteenths. Let's go ahead and see if we can remove this. So I'm gonna hold these like this. Oh, there's no one standing in front of me. I hope this doesn't break, by the way. There we go. All right. On there pretty tight. Right, so now if I check, a lot of it is there's probably thread locker on it. Now just use your holder tool and a ratchet to go ahead and remove the pinion nut. When we shot this originally, we took time to show how to count the number of turns before the pinion nut comes off, but since we're not using that method, we're going to skip through it in the video here. 
If you want to do that, it's pretty simple. Just use the marks that you have on the nut and the pinion, count how many turns, until you can remove the pinion nut from the threads. Right there, 16 and a half. So that was 16 and a half turns to remove this. So let's remember that, first of all. And the second thing you might see is I said somebody's been here before. Now I made mention that I had the axle swapped out. Well, at the same time, the uh, shop that did it put a uh, traction lock in. So it has a posi, as uh, Chevy would call it, but traction lock for Ford. Basically a limited slip differential was added. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, sealant here, RTV. And that would be put on this nut to prevent seepage coming out of here. Now, whether or not that means that's what caused our leak here, you don't know. Um, it could be our U-joints, could be other things, but it looks like someone's been here and that's why I had a little bit more of a tough time getting it off. We can go ahead and remove our $200 special tool that we made for nothing. Lesson learned, always hoard garbage if it's made of metal because you can always use that metal to make things. All right, we're going to use everybody's favorite tool, the three draw puller to remove this. So basically we need to get this taken out. Now, as you'll probably see, there's a little point on the end of this. As you can see on one of the three cameras, it's going to go right in there. But before we do that, ow, we need to make sure we've got a nice clear mark, which we have one right here and we have one there. So this is gonna allow us to replace this pinion flange exactly where it was, which is important. Now, if we were getting a new pin, pinion flange, then uh, wouldn't be so important. But to put the old one back in, we wanna put everything exactly where it was. So we've got a nice mark there. All right, we'll get the uh, three draw puller up there. And then we'll go get the right socket. So. Just like that. Okay, and there's our pinion flange, and here comes a lot of gear oil coming out of our, uh, <laughs> our flange as well. All right, so it's been a few days because we had to order a few parts. So as you can see, we've still got our rear differential ready for our pinion seal. But the problem is when we took our companion flange off, we noticed a little tiny bit of a groove on the uh, flange here. And that groove goes where the seal seats. And what we did is we took a little bit of emery cloth. We tried to clean it up. It's still there. You can feel it with a pick. It's probably fine, but I wasn't really comfortable. This is a car I want to keep long term. I figured let's take the extra step. Let's get a new companion flange, which we have now received. And uh, this has a perfect uh, mating surface there and it's ready to go. So the issue with the groove, if you have a groove on your companion flange and you put the seal in, well, the seal's going to go right where that groove is. And there's a risk that fluid will leak around that groove where the seal is. It won't be a proper seal. The one we have, honestly, and we'll show you the close-up pictures, it's probably okay, but we went ahead and did it. Now, originally when I shot the video, I thought it was a $35 part, and I got to tell you, the Ford parts catalogs are incorrect if you go to any of their websites and you go to the rear differential assembly and you see the companion flange and you see the little illustration and it looks exactly like this and says 35 bucks. Well, when you order it, if you went to a place like we did, like Varsity Ford, They'll reach out to you and let you know, hey, that's actually not the right part number for what you're looking for. So they did a little bit of checking and they were able to discover the right part number. Unfortunately, it is $99. So it's a little bit more than 35 bucks, but we were already kind of invested in it and uh, we went ahead and had them ship it out. So we're gonna put a new companion flange on, but before we do that, we have to get the old seal out and get the new seal in. All right, so the key with this seal is we wanna pop it out without damaging the seating surface or the inner piece. So I do have one of these. I have a seal puller. We can give that a try. See if we get any luck with it. Oh, that was easy. That was almost too easy. All right, so we're going to want to clean that up, get rid of all this junk. Oh yeah, 
look at that. Mm. So let's take our seal and we're going to set it up there. Now on the back side, we did put some grease in the channel to keep the spring from coming out. So we're going to want to get our seal set up here. Okay, and kind of get it started. Then we're going to take the tool that we have. We're going to set it on that outer lip. And there we go, our new seal is in and nice and flush. And I see no signs that our spring popped out, which is good, because if our spring had popped out, we'd be in bad shape. Looks like our spring stayed in there even with the hitting we were doing. So we're looking pretty good. All right, now that we've got our seal in, we can go ahead and get our companion flange installed. Now, you're not gonna wanna just put this thing on and hit it with a hammer to get it to seat. Technically, according to the service manual, you're supposed to use an installer tool. An installer tool, of course, like everything is expensive. It's $116. But if you've got a harmonic balancer installer kit, like you can pick up at Harbor Freight, and you've got a ball joint adapter kit, we were able to rig up something here. What, what I did was I made a special tool uh, based on the uh, one of the adapters in the harmonic installer kit, I found a nut that was in my stash of my bolt bin that is that thread, and then I welded it to an old Ford pinion nut. Fortunately, these pinion nuts are pretty standard across uh, most of the rear ends. I had the old Mountaineer rear end, the pinion nut worked on it. Also, they're extremely inexpensive. This one was like $3.99, so we're replacing putting a new one on, so you could always use the old one. Now, I did that to make this special tool with the idea that we'll put the pinion flange up and then we're going to thread this piece onto our pinion, which let's hope I was right and the threads are the same. They are. And then we'll use the tool to press on the pinion flange. The idea is that we're pressing on the pinion flange itself and if anything, we're pulling back on the pinion. We're not pressing the pinion in against the crush sleeve and the backlash of the gears. So that's the big problem, right? If you go and start hitting with a hammer and you start hitting this, you're gonna be hitting against that crush sleeve and affecting your backlash. So what I did on our new companion flange that we talked about is I put a little bit of gear oil on the splines and a little tiny bit of grease on the uh, inner flange piece here. The idea being when we go to slide this on, we'll have a little lubrication so we don't tear the seal. So I did transfer the marks and we'll go ahead and line it up. Now, this is a new one. You're not really, it's not necessary. The book doesn't call for lining the marks up because obviously you have a new one. But since these parts are identical to the one I took off, I lined up all the holes as close as I could, looked for any uh, weight drills that were in this one. This one had none, but compared to the other. And I at least made the marks where everything will bolt back together. So even though it's new, I'm still taking the time to put it back pretty much where it was. All right, so we'll go ahead and get that started. Okay, so when I thread this on, I'm just engaging a few of the threads. I'm not gonna use this to turn against and push that in. What I'm gonna do is leave that like that. So the idea is I don't wanna like pull against that. I need something to press this piece against. So this will stand off it far enough at least it should stand off it far enough to allow me to do that. Okay, so we'll get that piece threaded in. All right. All right, so what I should be able to then do is without damaging my backlash, 
going to hold this end. And I'm going to start to tighten this. So I'm going to tighten the big one. And what we should see, and I'm already seeing it a little bit. Hopefully you can see. I'll try to look at it. Watch as I turn this. You should start to see that move. All right, that should be good enough. All right, so we've gone ahead and put our flange on. There's still a tiny bit of a gap between our dust shield and the end, but the tool that we made didn't want to push any further and I didn't want to crank it on and make a problem. <laughs> so we're going to leave it as is. We actually checked the backlash on it we put a nut just hand tight and used our inch pound torque wrench and uh, we're still at the same setting we were before so we didn't disturb that. So we do have a new nut that's going to go on there and I think we can go ahead and start installing it. So one of the key reasons to use a new nut is that it has new sealing material both in the threads and on the bottom that helps any fluid from coming through the splines and then down the threads and seeping out there. So to further ensure that, or if you're using the original nut, you can put a little bit of gray RTV. You can put a little bit of uh, this gray RTV on the bottom here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hand thread on our new nut. As we do this, we're gonna go as we tighten. Now, obviously we've gotta get it to seat before we're actually tightening but we want to continually check our preload as we go along. We had two inch pounds originally, and our target is at least eight inch pounds. Eight to 14 inch pounds is the spec. If you're below that spec, the book asks you to tighten to that spec for used bearings. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we'll get our holder tool installed. And we're gonna start with a nice small ratchet just to get this seated. And you can see in there, I know you might not be able to on camera, but as we're going, it's going to feel tight because it's got all that sealant on the threads, even though it's a new nut. You can continually check. Now remember, we counted our threads as well, and we had like four or five threads. But what they recommend is as you go along, just continually check your backlash, make sure you're not over tightening it because you go too far, you got to take it apart. So I would rather do this 50 times than take it apart. All right, and uh, obviously we're not seated yet. So our reading is the same as it was. this rate, I'm only going like quarter turn at a time. All right, so no change in our backlash yet. We're getting close, but we're still at about two inch pounds. All right, now we're starting the seat. I feel a change there, at least in terms of how that's seating. So now I think's where we're gonna start to put a lot of torque against this and see a change in our preload. So let's, no, we're still pretty much at two. So we haven't changed, we haven't added any preload yet. So all we've done so far is really just been seeding that nut. Unless you've done many of these and have developed a good feel for them, it doesn't hurt to move slow and check settings often. And that's what we did, and that's why we're speeding up the video here. Better safe than sorry. Let's give this a try. We're only gonna do about an eighth of a turn. I still don't really feel much in the way of preload, and I've got this on pretty tight. So I can feel my backlash in there. It's not bad, it's pretty close. All right, good. Well, the breaker bars helped. Let's see if we've got any more 
I need more preload. So let's see if it's changed. Oh, it has. All right, we're making progress. So we're coming up to about four. So we're going to go another eighth of a turn. Breaker bar helped. It gave me that little bit of extra leverage. So, all right, let's go. All right, let's see where that is. I said, rather do it 50 times than mess it up once. All right. Oh, it is about perfect. All right, the uh, force to get, once you get it started, our rotational torque is right at about eight. We're not going any further than that, <laughs> all right? That's pretty much right at the minimum spec of eight. To keep our video shorter, we're gonna skip through these optional steps. We did replace the transmission output seal. It's fairly simple, but it did require a bit of work to remove. It was in there kind of tight and just wanted to tear with the standard removal tool. Hammer and chisel carefully and it comes out easily. We also botched the install of one seal and had to pick up a second. The first one went, went kind of crooked and it actually warped a bit. That's okay, we got it right on the second try. Now doing the drive shaft U-joints also managed to turn into a real pain. The yokes are sized to a point you can't just remove the U-joint with the caps out, and they're very tight. But what the book actually tells you to do is use a punch from the backside into the cap. What a mess! This was actually fairly frustrating. In retrospect, drilling a hole in the old caps, threading in a bolt, and using a slide hammer probably would be a neat trick to try. Maybe one day we'll do a longer video on this, but in the meantime, we do have several videos on our channel showing U-joint replacement. Just none of them where we had to actually use a punch tool. All right, so we're ready to put our drive shaft in, so we have to put it in yoke end first. So we'll get it up over the exhaust. And uh, let's go ahead and put that in. But before we do that, I wanna check where our three marks went. Here's our three marks. I wanna line those up. All right, so let's go ahead and Put the yoke in. There we go. And then we can take this. And we want to line up to our original marks. And uh, get a bolt in my back pocket. Let's hold it with one bolt for now. Put another one in for good measure. All right, now these bolts, they've got, looks like some old Loctite on them of some kind. And uh, what we're gonna do, since we have two of them just holding it in, I'm gonna take the other ones to the bench grinder. We're gonna clean them up and put some medium strength Loctite on them. It goes without saying, be careful when using the wire wheel on the grinder to clean the bolts. These two are good. All right, so go ahead and put these two in. And then we'll take these two out. Go clean these up. Got him. Anyone ever use this stuff? How much are you supposed to put on? Like glob it on? If a little dab will do you, a ton is even better. Of course, things are just fine if you use a moderate amount of blue or medium strength Loctite. We reused the original bolts after cleaning the threads, applying Loctite, and then we ran them down finger tight. Next, we'll torque them the spec. All 
right. 83 pound feet. Mark, they're all torqued. Please don't have metal all over you. Might have some. Oh, not bad. That's okay. That's a break in from the limited slip that we had put in when it was rebuilt. That looks pretty good. So go ahead and put in your spec oil until it starts coming out. Oh, look at that. That's full. Okay, there we go. That should be plenty tight. All right, now that everything's back together, we can put our brakes back on. And uh, the caliper anchor bolts, not the anchor, but the caliper bolts only torque to 20 pound feet, so they don't go very tight. And uh, I think we're going to be replacing the brakes anyway pretty soon on this. This pad's getting kind of worn, and it's been a long time since these were done. So eventually we'll be doing some maintenance on these. But in the meantime, let's slap them back in as they are. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap the video up for today because the core things we're doing are all complete. We've gone ahead and put our brakes back on. We've got this wheel on. We've got the other one to do over there. And then all we gotta do to finish this up, we're gonna get it off the lift. We're gonna torque these to 85 to 105 pound feet as the book says, put the center caps on, turn your air suspension back on and we're good to go. So in summary today, we changed our pinion flange seal and in the process followed all the steps in the book and found that our actual uh, preload setting on the car was below specification for a used bearing to begin with, which is entirely possibly why we ended up with a bad seal since our U-joint seemed okay in the drive shaft. But at any rate, as we put it back together by the book, we actually were able to go ahead and set that correctly. And we're now at about nine inch pounds of drag of preload, which is kind of at the low end of the specification, but I didn't really wanna go any farther and risk going above that Remember, 8 to 14 inch pounds is the spec for used bearings. So happy about that. We've got a new companion flange. We put new U-joints in the drive shaft. We put a new transmission output seal, even though I had to run up and buy a second from the parts store, which if it didn't make it into the video, I did. Now, if you like this, go ahead and drop us a like, comment, subscribe, all those good things, you know. Um, but specifically, subscribe because we're going to have more on this car. So if you're looking for town car stuff, We've got a few videos already posted and we've got some more work we're gonna do. So when I get this thing off the lift, I'm not done with it. But anyway, if you like this, come back, check out more. We'll always have good content here. Well, we'll have content at least here on Vortex Garage. We'll see ya.